I've been sent a couple of things from Fnursy. I think that's how you say it. Is it Fnursy or Fnursy? I don't know. Let me know in the comments. But they've sent us a USB soldering iron. So up till now, I've been using my TS-ATP. But one of the slightly frustrating things with this is the soldering iron bits are really expensive. So I've always been stuck with the default one. But with this one, Fnursy have sent me a whole selection of different soldering iron bits. So we've got a selection of things we can try out and use. So that's really handy. And we'll do a bit of soldering later. It also comes with this very tiny solder stand with a little sponge. That's very retro. We've got this nice cable. It is very thick and chunky. So I'll be able to use that for some other things. I've got a bunch of cables already, but this one looks really high quality. And it feels very, very rubbery. We've got this nice 65 watt gallium nitride power supply. Um, I've also got a bunch of power supplies, so I'm not sure I need to use this one. And it's got a slightly funny plug, but it looks pretty good quality. And maybe we'll try it out later and see how well it performs. I'll put that in my box of bits. We've also got this nice three-in-one oscilloscope. It's an oscilloscope, a transistor tester, and it's a signal generator. And it comes with this nice probe. So we'll try this out later as well. So let's get the soldering iron unwrapped and we'll give it a go. It's an intelligent electric soldering iron. Very fancy. We'll read the manual later. We'll peel off the nice little plastic. And to fit the soldering bit, iron bit, we just unscrew this and then slide it in. And this is like a nice handy thing for when you're out and about. You can cover up the hot soldering iron bit so it doesn't burn your bag. So let's plug it in and see if it works. So it powers up nicely and then we just hit this button and it should heat up. And there we go, 300 degrees C. Seems to be working nicely. I think we should try and do a bit of soldering and see how well this works. I will probably change the tip to one of the finer ones as we're going to do a bit of fine work. I've got one of my ESP32 PCBs from the guys at PCB Way. If you're on the lookout for a good PCB, then I can thoroughly recommend them. Great quality and great to work with. If you watched some of my previous videos, you can learn all about these boards. Up until now, I've been using my mini hot plate and my hot air gun to solder these up but it's always fun to try a bit of manual soldering. I've got a new batch of ESP32 S3 modules to solder on, so let's give it a go and see how well this soldering iron actually works. It's gonna be quite hard to light it up. I usually use a bit of sticky tape to hold it in place. So let's get the microscope and see how we go. I've taped the module into the correct place and lined up all of the pads. I'm going to squirt a bunch of flux to make the job a bit easier, and this is probably way too much flux. With that done, we can just work our way along soldering up each pad and retouching the pads that need it. And now we can do the left side. This time I've been a bit more careful with the flux as there was way too much the first time. The only pin I'm going to have to revisit is the ground pin. There's a big ground plane connected to this, which makes it tricky to solder. The other side is also pretty easy to solder up. This size of tip seems to be pretty much perfect for this job. After a bit of a wash with the toothbrush and alcohol, it cleans up nicely. The ground pin on one side is a bit of a mess, but we can clean that up later. The big question is, does it work? And the answer is, of course it does. We've got our test blink sketch running nicely. Okay, let's take a look at the three in one oscilloscope. So let's open it up. Well, we've got the instruction book. I may actually read this. And we got a nice warning thing, so do not blow it up. Let's see what accessories we've got in here. So let's open the envelope up. Ah, uh, we have some nice little probes, so we can use that with the M-Tester. Uh, there's a nice charging cable. And we got some crocodile clips, so I'll um, see what we do with those later. I'm not sure where they go, but it looks interesting. So let's unwrap this and see what we've got.
There we go. There, let's do the plastics peel. Very nice. Where's the where's the on button? Um, how do we make it turn on? Ah, there we go. Turned on. So I've actually had this quite old component tester for quite a while. It's kind of based on similar software. Uh, I made a nice box for it. Um, so let's try it out and it should still work. So let's see what this component is. Okay, so it's an N-channel MOSFET. So this component tester works nicely, but it's pretty old and the screen's not that great. So let's try out this new one. So let's find the M tester. There we go. So let's turn that on. And then the only thing with these M testers is you have to make sure you use different pins for each of the leg you're trying to test. So let's stick that in. Oops. Let's try and stick that in. There we go. And let's test it. So there we go. It's an N-channel MOSFET. So not bad. So let's give it a go with an LED. Oops, uh, as I say, could have used different pins. So let's try that again. And then it flashes for a bit. And there we go, it's a diode with a forward voltage of 1.71 volts. So let's try it with an inductor. Get the two legs in different holes. So there we go, a two millihenry inductor. Not bad. Um, let's try this power MOSFET, see what it makes of that. So that works as well. Not bad at all. So this should work with pretty much any component you can find. I think it's pretty flexible. Let's try a diode. Now there are some special pins here for testing Xenia diodes, but I'm just going to use the normal pins for these diodes. And there we go, there's a diode, forward voltage 0.7. So that works nicely. Okay, let's try it with a capacitor. That uh, takes a bit of time. And I put it into the wrong pins. Let's try that again. All right, so that's a... Uh, it's like a 10 microfarad capacitor. Let's double check that. Where is the writing? Always very tiny. There we go. 10 microfarad. So that's not bad. Here's a green LED. Let's see what it does with the green LED. Get some flashing. There we go. V forward 1.98. So it looks like it's pretty much the same as my existing M tester, but the display is much nicer. So I like it. I like that a lot. Not bad at all. So let's exit from this and let's try out the signal generator. So for this, we use this output um, socket. So we need this adapter. And I'll hook this up to my oscilloscope and we'll see what we get. Okay, so I've hooked it up to my oscilloscope and we should be getting one kilohertz with three volts peak to peak. So that's working pretty nicely. So let's try out the square wave. There we go, square wave works as well. So that's not bad. And here we've got the triangle wave. So that works pretty well, not bad at all. Let's go back to the sine wave and see what frequency we can get out of this. Okay, 100 kilohertz. Not bad at all, brilliant. And it looks like the maximum amplitude you can get out is 3.3 volts. So that's pretty good. That's our signal generator. Not bad at all. So let's try out the oscilloscope. Okay, I've hooked it up to my oscilloscope. And then if we just hit the auto ranging, we should get a signal coming up. So there we go. That's uh, 400 hertz at, um, well, it should be 5 volts peak to peak, but I seem to be measuring 0.49. So I think all that's happened is I've, I've left, the, left the probe on 10x. So let's switch that to 1x. Uh, then if we do the auto range again, there we go, 5 volts, 400 hertz, so that's pretty good. 
Let's try bumping the frequency up. There we go, that's one kilohertz. So again, we'll do the auto ranging. Pretty good, one kilohertz, five volts peak to peak. Let's put it up to 50 kilohertz. Okay, so we'll do the auto range. And there we go, 50 kilohertz, not bad. So let's, uh, let's go up to 100 kilohertz. Well, we're still working, 100 kilohertz, five volts peak to peak. Uh, let's see if we can really push it. I'll push it up to one megahertz output. Let's see what that does. Or we could do 200 kilohertz. Uh, let's push it even more. Okay, well, it seems to be struggling now, so I guess um, guess around 2 kilohertz, 200 kilohertz is probably where we want to stop. Uh, it really doesn't lie at 1 megahertz. But um, that's not bad at all. I'm pretty pleased with that. And a fully functioning oscilloscope. So we can do square waves. That's good. Square wave at 100 kilohertz. It's not bad. Uh, I think I do need to calibrate the probe. Um, there is a little screwdriver to adjust it. So I'll do that later. Uh, there's a nice 10 kilohertz square wave. So I think this will be really useful. I think um don't want to lug the oscilloscope around every time I want to do some measurements. Um, so that's not bad. So let's see what else we've got. So let's see over on the tools menu. There's a voltmeter. That's what the other input's for. There's a three-wire uh, temperature sensor. So that's pretty handy. So not bad at all. Not sure what this one is. Ah, infrared decoder. Let's try this out. Where's my infrared remote control? There we go. Oh, that's pretty impressive. That's very, very cool. So not bad at all. Thank you, Flercy, for the free stuff. Brilliant as always. So fantastic. Let me know what you think in the comments. I'll put a link to these products down there. So have a look and see what you think. Thanks for watching.